Hunter x Hunter episode 95. If they don't kill this thing, I'm gonna be so pissed, honestly. I want a victory for Knuckle. But this, but Knuckle's strategy is so reliant on being able to land hits. He's not landing hits. He's not landing hits. Don't punch where he is. Punch where he's gonna be. I I don't know. I don't know. We haven't seen Knuckles' true potential yet either. We've only seen him, you know, take it easy on Gon. And the teacher's gotta be stronger, you figure, right? I mean, for Knuckles' power, you don't even need to land a solid hit to the face, right? You don't need to go for a knockout. You can, like, flick his toe and incur debt, no? Uh-oh. Eh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm confident. Cheetah guy has raw natural speed, but not a lot of experience, not a lot of mental acuity. He seems like a one-trick cheetah. I mean, for that matter, I've heard that about cheetahs, right? I mean, they kind of rely on opponents running to do damage from momentum. It's not... Well, I mean, they're wild animals. They're amazingly strong, but compared to other wild cats, I've lost function in my hand before from a bite from a wild kitten, like a, of a normal cat. So it's, it's not that cheetahs aren't strong, just comparatively. Grudge X and X Dread. I mean, we've seen he can dodge bullets. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm saying. His mouth. Breath. Genius. How do he figure that one out? One hit! Massive compounding interest debt. Yes, there it is. Feel the debt. Exactly. Where's the little thing? Where's the cute little thing? I want to see it destroy something I don't love. There you are. <laughs> it feels so much better when it's against someone we, I don't like. I'll suffer. Suffer from the compound interest, the most powerful force in the universe. You don't need to know. We don't need to ex exposition it this time. And he can't leave now that he has debt. I'm guessing if, if his net is disabled, it, that cripples his speed? Oh, you don't understand yet. I can use my credit card just this one time. <laughs> yeah, my first instinct was like, this is not important. There's low stakes because it's this stupid cheetah thing. And honestly, it's really hard to care about anything after the introduction of the Royal Guard and the King. But then it occurred to me this might be a great strategy. It's not so much that it's like a chess game where you got to get through the pawns to get to the Queen or King. But since actually I think the greatest risk right now, similar to the danger of Knuckles power, is the compounding nature of the ants spreading throughout the world. It makes some sense to try to kill the, the weaker Kings to mitigate the spread while you simultaneously try to figure out a way to beat the, the strongest of them. I've seen the ants compared to a dangerous pathogen or like a rampant disease, in which case you try to stop the spread while you're looking for a cure. Maybe it's that kind of thing. I was wondering about this. This is a really important question. Oh, that's good. Okay. Wait, it's literally called the IRS? Oh, we all are. But I think they're okay. Hurts to find out you're a one trick pony. Are you prepared? So that's what this is. He's a Pokemon trainer. That was his eye that time. Interesting. Look inside the Pokeball. That's a little kite! I'm guessing he- will, will he be able to talk? He looks alright. He's fine. <laughs> I don't know. He's alive. I'm coming around to Gon's optimism. One thing that just came to mind is this is clearly a Nen power, but I think what we just saw from Kalua lays a, a nice precedent and groundwork for, for this and what it could possibly be. With Kalua's pin, I get the sense that it's not universally liked that it was Nen control and then he 
pulled out a physical thing. Maybe the thinking is it cheapens the character development aspect of it. But as I said in that episode, I think you can have both at the same time. It can be a literal Nen object and also have it be massive character development. Like he had to get himself to that point to pull it out in the first place. It can serve largely as a symbol. The same can be true here for Kite, where this is Nen control. He's a captive of some sorts and Gon can reach him, which can reflect both the nature of their relationship and some character insights, as well as being part of the, the physical Nen system. Right, but it's gonna be hard work. I mean, he already seems somewhat, like, not fully ready to destroy them. He's just kind of standing there. Maybe you could try talking from a distance. These sounds are killing me in the background. I mean, it's not going to be all Nen, right? Other peripheral things are keeping up with his Nen development, just his body, his instincts, his mind. Kind of like how with weight training, most people are doing it to improve their muscle strength and appearance. But like every part of your body is growing simultaneously, including your emotional system. One is really, really facing it in his way. Left. Oh, wow. Left. Yeah. <laughs> Called it. Oh, he's hugging him. It's not your fault, but it's big of you to take so much responsibility. There it is. I can make a, a kind of corny, but somewhat realistic metaphor for this. Most of the time, probably, if you're fighting with someone or if someone is being aggressive to you, you're not really fighting them. You have touched some concept, some idea, some sense of self, some ideology that they've become beholden to. I don't know. It's something like we all have these slots for beliefs in different areas or different domains of life, and they can't possibly be empty. They can be changed and they can be actively chosen. But if not understood and not actively chosen, one will be there by default, whether it's something we've come across in life or something our early cognition came up with as just a placeholder to ensure safety and survival at the possible expense of nuance and complete understanding and flexibility. And even if they don't fulfill the highest possible function for an individual, they certainly fill a function, which is at the very least a feeling of safety, knowing I have something in some way and some concept of the world from which I can act or conceptualize what things are. I'm not living in a total void where I'm paralyzed. People will fight for all sorts of things that in no way are connected to or benefit them, except that it gives them an identity. It gives them perhaps a feeling of superiority or the comfort of thinking they have some leverage on the solutions to the problems that scare them the most. At any rate, I think it's such a cool image to see this like invisible puppet master emerge out of the dark cloud. In its way, it's very persona. Level I love it. Getting too close. But there are strings which means they can be cut. Not even actually kite. Can we bring kite back though by cutting the strings? Or is his life tied to this creature? I mean, for their credit, they did their part. They brought him back. Yeah, it's gonna be so frustrating to not have Nen right now. You can lean on the people around you though. At least we know the challenge. <laughs> or, or lean on yourself, you know. Fair enough, fair enough. I get it. Like is usually the case with Gon, it's not just about the result. I mean, it definitely is about the result. It definitely is about freeing Kite. But it's also about Gon's sense of self and him not wanting to ever feel like he can't do the thing he wants to do and help the people he wants to help. I can make kind of a strange personal comparison to this. One of my lifelong dreams is to have enough money or income or whatever that I can just tell my parents, just retire, take it easy. I'll like, I'll get your expenses from now on. On the surface, it's for them, you know? But like imagining if they each won the lottery, it would be a relief that the, the material problem had been solved. But there's something about that that would also rob me of, I think, something really 
essential, which is that expression of self and having a golden dream that I'm like pushing myself towards that I then get to see myself accomplish. And all of the things that come with that for me internally, it's like if you imagine this goal out there having gravity that's pulling you up to have that goal finished is a net loss of that development energy and a loss for that personal narrative sort of thing. We had a really weird date? That's a lie. Okay, let's jump right through this. Is that pa that is Palm back there? Whatever. So in the end it is all four of us. Or they can die, but you know, I think they've proven they have the right to make their own choices. Oh, it's there. Oh, that's odd. Yeah, it doesn't matter. I feel some kinship with going in the learning methodology. It's very hard for me to like sit down and study something because I want to learn something just sort of in a vacuum. Even if I have a goal, the energy and drive is nowhere near as strong as when I'm directly facing the situation. So example, I've lived in Korea on and off for about five years and I've done a bunch of traditional studying and you know, I've learned a fair amount from that. But by far the greatest gains I've made were from interpersonal relationships in which I was forced to use the language because it's so much more emotionally compelling. It's less abstract, like I'm doing this for a reward later. It's like, no, this is the situation <laughs> that is the thing. And then I can sort of study in and around those those moments, those periods of my life. I would also wager, I guess, that this might be the answer for a lot of people who feel stuck in terms of learning things or doing things. I think if one is the type where front-loading information and learning is the right answer, that'll probably happen naturally. You'll already know that. You'll already be doing that. If you're stuck in this loop of thinking about doing something and then never taking action doing the thing, or on the stage of like, what class should I take in this thing? How do I learn this thing before I begin? The answer might be to just start the thing and do it poorly <laughs> and let the walls you hit in taking action be the source of the question then you then seek out the answers for so that there's a very one-to-one -one relationship and also emotional relationship between what you most need to learn to progress and what you're learning and how motivated you are to learn it. It's like just start it, do it really badly a hundred times and improve one small thing each time and see if that doesn't just make it happen. It's running in, in his subconscious somewhere, it's on a channel. Gon has always compartmentalized really well. A moment of silence for the the best country to ever exist. What is not he? Oh, they're controlling him. He's a puppet too. It's so funny to me they can see Nen on TV. That the camera has Nen. Especially South Korea, you know what I mean? I'm still so curious. I really want to see more of the king. That little introduction, the little political philosophy introduction was so compelling or so interesting. I want more. Any more? He's uh, putting on his favorite t-shirt. Damn, Netero just solid snake over here. Old snake. Watch Netero come back as a puppet. I love how they're just inserting Palm into in all these frames. Good, leave. Enough talking, leave. <laughs> long, long goodbye. Yes. I wonder if it'll have dulled the senses a little bit. Probably not. My expectation about this from your life is that after like five minutes of rust, he'll be better than before. There's a temptation to think that you have to constantly practice something to get better at it, when sometimes what you most need is a period off. Speaking of subconscious layers, your brain is still working on it. Similar to how sometimes math problems or logic problems pop into your head much later after you stop working on them. <laughs> I mean, can we not? <laughs> Just how many times we need to the test never ends. For a lesser person, those images would cause paralysis. Gon's been chewing on this for quite some time. So much for rust. Rust is flying off. 
that's enough. That's good enough. You proved your point. No need to kill Moral. Something a little bit out of control about it, though. He says innocently. <laughs> Moral did not have the best introduction in my eyes. But he's a good dude. Whoa! Okay, th that I feel really confident about for some reason. Shubov, I don't know. I don't know. I don't really know. <laughs> this is wild. This matchup is wild. I would never count Netero out, though. Though, I mean, of course, highly dangerous. Ooh, who decided? It was probably it was Netero. He decided. And he did this deliberately. He knows what he's doing, sending Gon and Kloa after Neverpitu. Even on the brink of human apocalypse. In a mission that is life or death for everyone. He finds a way to add a little test in there. If it's not a test in some way, Netero doesn't want it. The real Net test has only begun. But no, it's also probably counting on the fact that Gon and Kloa will be pushed the farthest and do their best, given their connection to Neferpito, but it can be both. Speaking of which, we still haven't seen that much of Neferpito's power. I mean, we kind of see that it's a puppet controlling things, but it's so cool and it's so much interesting potential, narratively, thematically. I mean, just visually, there's something so striking about this. The strings are there this whole time. There's a puppet master controlling you. It's not really you, but unless you're really, really highly skilled at Nen, which is life, you can't see it. You're forced to deal with the surface level of things. It's just so cool.